The Pickaway County Jail was full in 2015 when the Attorney General's Heron Unit assisted law enforcement departments here with a major drug investigation. 72 people were indicted. Our corrections officers became medical personnel. They had to learn how to deal with, with people coming off of, of the addiction of heroin um, and the dangers associated with that. With the opiate crisis, there was a revolving door of inmates who'd get clean in jail, get out and use, only to end up back behind bars. The Attorney General's Heroin Unit outreach team offered to help. Jennifer Benger reached out to me. When we initially met, the, the plan was that we were gonna have a community meeting. And that community meeting, the, the, at the end of the day, was going to create a uh, plan, a plan of what we need in Pickaway County. What, where the resources are, um, connect the people that need to be connected, and, and not tell us in Pickaway County how to fix the problem. You know, it's our problem. It's, it's our problem that we need to figure out and how, how to, to fix our problem. Jennifer, personally, we, we spoke to her. I was talking to her at least once a week for you know, a few months. Every time I'd say, well, I ran into this problem, she always had an answer. She always had someone, hey, why don't you call uh, you know, this person? Why don't you call that person? I think they could really help you. Those connections led Lieutenant Gabe Carpenter to one of his goals, signing up inmates for Medicaid benefits while still in jail, so that the moment they are released, they have access to Vivitrol, counseling, and other services like job assistance in order to stay clean and hopefully out of jail. How long have you been incarcerated? A county job and family services employee now comes to the jail to enroll inmates, eliminating the normal 30-day gap time between an inmate getting out and getting help. Out of the 27 people that we were able to get into this program last year, I believe it was only about six have returned. That's a win. It's a voluntary program. Inmates have to complete a long application with their action plan to stay sober. A team reviews the applications. And I think that's another reason I struggle is because I don't have that parent. Austin Walker, recovering from a heroin addiction, hopes never to come back here. His fiance, seven months pregnant, is waiting at home. Lieutenant Carpenter has found a local church member willing to mentor Austin on the outside. Thank you, I appreciate it. All good? All good. All right, give us some notes. It really showed when he said that, that uh, you know they are here to help. Um, and him setting up somebody for me on the outside you know, shows that not only does he care in here, you know, but he cares, you know, after I walk out this door. You know what I mean? Um, not very many people are like that these days. So it's, uh, I think that what they're doing is a very good thing. I do. I'm hoping that it not only helps me, but helps other inmates along the way too. Sorry. I don't, uh, I don't have parents. You know, my parents, um, my mom left when I was five. Uh, my dad kicked me out at 17. I've been on my own since. We think that makes a big, big difference because in the end, as we all say, we're not gonna arrest our way out of this problem. Law enforcement is very important. We gotta keep the pressure on these, uh, on these guys who are out there killing people. But we also have to work with prevention. We have to do a better job linking people into treatment. And that's what this other part of our heroin unit is all about. So we have a, a six people in our office uh, who work on this every single day. The official numbers are that we lost eight people a day last year in Ohio. I think the numbers are frankly higher. This is the worst uh, drug epidemic I've seen in, in my lifetime. Working together, we can change Ohio's headlines. We can change our story. The face of heroin today is the face of Ohioans. This wave of heroin and, and opiates uh, that is drowning the state, it, it's still coming. But there is good news. And, and you know, I'm an optimist. And I, I think. I see a lot of good news out there. Not terribly long ago, uh, the Summit County had a big surge of overdoses. There were over 40. And our community outreach staff reached out to um, both the law enforcement as well as the public health side to see what we could do to be of assistance. Brainstorming ideas, this one stuck. 
what if Summit County's 17 health inspectors could reach their 3,500 restaurants with a flyer to help managers recognize the signs of addiction with quick resources to help? We targeted neighborhoods um, that we knew had higher incidence rates for overdose, but also surrounding areas as well. Now it's another good idea the heroin unit can share with other counties across the state. The Attorney General's Office, Alicia Nelson, became intricately involved. When the Summit County Community Partnership obtained a donation of 40,000 pouches that people can use to safely dispose of unwanted painkillers, the heroin unit suggested groups to target, like senior citizens. Fill it halfway with water and then zip it shut and throw it in the trash. Shake it up and throw it in the trash. She was there to offer her knowledge and expertise around what's happening statewide, what's happening, uh, what she sees happening countywide in conjunction with the Opia Task Force. Housing partners allow access for break to give pouches to seniors and pharmacy partners include a pouch with each new opiate prescription. Our 40,000 donation of those pouches, if those pouches are used to capacity, they will eliminate more than 1.3 million pills off the streets of Summit County. In addition to helping counties and other communities with specific solutions, the Attorney General's Heroin Unit has hosted conferences with other states, events for Ohio pastors, and even phone banks to ensure first responders know about a naloxone rebate. The drug has saved countless lives. It's now being carried by most of Pickaway County's first responders. We take an oath of office that we're going to protect people's lives. And we don't pick and choose who we protect. And, you know, as I said, people that come to jail, I always tell people this every day, people that come to jail are not always bad people. People that make mistakes, a twist in fate, and we could be in the same position that they're in. I take it as our responsibility as law enforcement officers to be there to try to to help them, to try to get them back on track. And, and having the, the assistance and the support, more than anything, the support of our Attorney General and our Attorney General's office means a lot. I'm convinced that every Ohioan can be involved in some way at the local level to make a difference, to save lives. You know, we want people to call us, um, you know, just pick up the phone, call us, and we will be there to try to help. Uh, we don't have a magic wand, we can't make this problem go away, but I'm convinced that you know, we're seeing stuff that works all over the state of Ohio, and we can share that with you. That's really the good news. <laughs>